Hello everyone, I'm Colin Connett. Today I'm going to be making a setup depth gauge jig for my routers. Uh, but before I get started, I wanted to show you um, the Woodwork Web t-shirts, and there's a few different versions. This isn't the only one. You can check them out. The link is in the description box below. But in the meantime, let's get started making this jig. This jig is going to work for any router that you have, and I have, uh, I actually have three routers, but one of them is in my router table. So what I need to do, I'm starting off with a piece of MDF, and this is one inch thick MDF. And when I get finished, and you'll see this in a little while, uh, I'm going to have a base on it. But basically what I'm going to do is drill a hole in it uh, and make a slot so that when my router is on this base, I can move the router up and down with the bit in it and with some um, little depth gauges that I'm going to make, I'll be able to set the height of the bit very accurately and very quickly. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I use these little measuring bars. These are great things, um, but for setting the depth gauge on a router, they're not always as accurate as I'd like them to be, and they're certainly a lot slower. So, because you need to release the, in this case, it's a, a plunge router, and of course you need to release it, and you know, you, you can see from there that... <laughs> It's, it's just a little awkward. This new jig is going to solve that and make it super quick and super accurate. Now the only thing I really need to make sure of, of course, is that uh, my biggest router base will sit on this, on my platen. And I'm going to make sure that I give a little bit of extra room and I'm measuring this out. It looks like 10 by 10 inches is going to give me plenty of room. So I'm just going to go over to the table saw and cut out a square 10 by 10 inches. Now the next thing I need to do is drill a hole in it and I'm going to use my hole saw and I'm using my two and three quarter inch um, just because that's the hole saw that I have and it doesn't really matter how um, big the hole is as long as it accommodates your largest bit. Um, and this one's a little bit larger than my largest, so it'll work perfect. Now half, I'm going to put the hole sort of half, but I'm not going to put it right in the middle. Uh, the middle would be right here. I'm going to move it a little bit further back, um, just so that it balances a little bit better. So there's the halfway mark there. There's the middle. I'm going to put that right about there. And I'll go over to the drill press. Hole saws pack quite a bit of power, so you can see that I've clamped it down here so that I make sure that this base doesn't move on me. And there's our hole. That's perfect. Uh, what I need to do now is make some marks here, some straight lines, so I can go over to the bandsaw and cut that portion out. So there's what my depth gauge looks like so far, and I just cleaned up the inside a little bit just to make it look a little bit nicer. There's the base, I've already cut that. Uh, I'll be gluing or and or screwing it to the base, I haven't quite decided yet. And now what I need to do is cut some strips of wood that are going to sit in here so that I can measure them at exactly the base, the, the distance that I want. So for example, if I put this in here right now and move that bit to the bottom, that's exactly one inch because this wood is one inch. So I've got some pieces of wood here, bits of scrap and warped wood that I have that I'm going to straighten out and, and we'll run that through the planer. And I have a list here of all of the woods that I want to cut, all of the depths that I want to cut, and then I'll mark them so that I know how deep they are.
Okay, I went back into my wood pile and I actually found some other scraps that are even more usable. And some of them I had to trim down, as you could see on the planer. But you can see how they step down. And I've set my light so you can actually see um, the shadow in there and, and exactly how they work. I took a moment to screw the back on and I countersunk all the holes because I want to make sure that it's really tight, that these two are, are very tight to one another. I've taken and marked all of my little strips of wood here, my little depth gauges. And for example, this one says three quarters. And that means that the depth of cut for my router bit is going to be three quarters of an inch. If I take this one, it says one eighth. That means the depth of my router cut is going to be one eighth of an inch. Now I'm going to use the half inch one for a moment just to show you how this works. So we'll lay the half inch in the slot there and now when I take my router over and my all of these routers plunge routers have a locking lever on them so you can push them down and and they'll lock so what I'm going to do now I'm going to take that router and lock it down touch it to the half inch and now most good routers will have a locking lever see that little lever there and it will drop down onto a turret, and you can turn that turret to a variety of different depths. But when I take that and let it drop right there, and then I can take that and lock it in that position, now when I release the router to go back up, now when I take it over to the wood that I want to route, then I can take that, whether it's on the edge, if I'm going to route a dado or a rabbit, I can do that there. And it's locked. Now it's locked because that pin is dropped down to the turret. I've locked it down to the turret. See that? It's dropped down to that turret. And it's locked there because I've, I've, uh, it's, it's sitting there. I'm not doing anything. And if I can release it so that it goes back up. So if I want to start in the middle of that wood, I can drop it down and it'll start plunging into the wood and when it when it hits that depth over here with the bar that's the depth that I know that that's at a half inch and I can take that and move that to all sorts of different pieces of wood and now every time I move that and every time I drop it down I know that that's going to be set at the half inch depth. Now, as you can see, I didn't round mine off to fit in there. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I also could have squared that off in the bandsaw, then they would fit in. But look, I just left mine square because that way <laughs> I can use them any which way. It really doesn't matter. And I know that I can get full use out of both sides of them if I just sort of leave it that way. And if I need to make more of them, they're really quick and easy to make. And that is a great way of setting the depth on your router. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.